Our daughter Jalen basically represents all three of the hard cases that we hear all the time put forward by those who are abortion supporters. Um, her birth mother was 13. She was uh, raped at 13 and um, she, she was told that she was too young to have a baby. She was told that this was a rapist baby um, and that she was also told that there was something wrong with this baby. This baby was biracial and nobody would want the baby. Um, when she, she was actually taken to the abortion clinic, she was there for about five or six hours and during that time she received the counseling that her baby is not formed yet and that nobody would want a biracial rapist baby. Um, but she was also told that if she did not consent to the abortion she would die. So she also had the life of the mother exception. So she has all three, rape, something's wrong with your baby, and life of the mother, you're going to die if you don't abort. Um, so that was kind of what she was going into. Add to the fact that she was 13, she had no parental support. She had no ability to get a job or a driver's license or um, you know any way to care for this baby on her own. She really had everything stacked against her and every possible temptation to go through with the pressure to abort her daughter. Jalen's birth mother was raped and became pregnant and uh, through that circumstance, you know, she was being essentially advised by her mother to have an abortion. Uh, she didn't care to have an abortion and was uh, against the idea, but being as young as she was and, you know, the thought of going against her mother's wishes was, you know, a concern or scary to her. And she didn't have all the facts. I mean, she was very young and, you know, not, not fully knowledgeable. Uh, she had the opportunity to talk to Julie and Julie gave her a lot of good information. And uh, Jalen's birth mother was very young and in a very difficult situation and we felt a sense of responsibility that if we were going to ask a 13 year old at the time, uh, you know, she was 14 when Jalen was born, if we were going to ask a, a, ch a child that young to have a child that we felt that we needed to step up and you know, show her that, you know, someone did want her child and that we were willing to be responsible for and be the, you know, we offered to be the parents of the child. Um, as for our family personally, oh my goodness, the, the things that we have learned, I mean, just incredible patience and uh, have, you have to have a servant's heart to be able to do this. Um, it's taught us that, you know, you really have to get down and serve in a completely different way. It's, it's one thing when you have biological children who have all, you know, their typical needs, um, where you have to have patience and, and take care of them. It's different when you're entrusted with a child by another human being, and that then that child has um, special needs that, that require um, just a, a completely different level. I mean, we just had to go to a different level um, than we even realized we were capable of. I think if you'd asked us prior to adopting and we would have kind of hesitated, I'm not sure if I could do that, but um, through God, I mean, we know now that we have a lot more strength than we gave ourselves credit for. She has a heart for other special needs children. Um, she can pick them out of a crowd we're at a birthday party and there's all these other kids around. She's not paying any attention to them. And a mother comes walking through the yard and she's carrying her child on her hip. And my daughter goes right up to her and the little girl turns around and she has downs. And my daughter's like, hi, what's your name? And that's who she stuck with the entire time. Her best friend in school is a little boy named Judah. And he is a, um, He's adopted son of friends of ours, and he's a victim of shaken baby. His, uh, his, he's blind, he's mostly deaf, um, he's in a wheelchair, and Jalen loves him to pieces. And he can hear the tone of her voice, and she sings to him, and he laughs and smiles, and it is just amazing. She loves to pet his face and hold his hands, and um, we have a young man at our church who has, um, um, his hands are deformed and he's in a chair from muscular dystrophy. And she likes to come up and hold his hand at church 
and she'll go up front and he's he's up there praising too and she'll come up and just put her hand on his and talk to him and I've never seen anything she's completely comfortable it's it's beautiful um, the other thing about Jalen is she is a complete and total daddy's girl um, I love that because God knew that she had that heart to be a daddy's girl and in her situation she wouldn't have had a father figure and so he needed her to be with him because she needed that daddy figure. Jay, who's your best friend? Daddy. And? You. <laughs> <laughs>